Well, guys, there's been a few uh, questions on a few forums about gas valves, so hopefully this will help. Uh, there's past and present gas valves here on the table, um, all still on sale, obviously, because we're obliged to keep spare parts for a long number of years, so they're all still available. Um, I'll kick off with the sit tandem valve. Um, this particular valve was off a heating only boiler uh, and it was fixed rate on the burner, it wasn't modulating. So this one, with it being a sit, had the blue ignition board on the top, if you remember. Now, to alter the burner pressure on here, we have a plus and a minus on the screw. Obviously plus increasing the burner pressure and the minus decreasing the burner pressure. We no longer use this as we know everything's modulating but this is still available. We also used a Honeywell one for the fix rate and the Honeywell one was like you'd see a gas valve on a BBU with the plastic cap that you'd unscrew and screw down to, to, to increase and, 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 and let out to decrease or, or the opposite way around. You tell me you're working on these appliances. So that, that was Honeywell and SIT for the, the fixed rate. Then we moved on to modulating where the modulator comes into play and this was the, the SIT tandem gas valve that we used again with the, uh, the modulator on the front. If I remove the cap, the brass nut was the high burner pressure and the plastic nut in the middle was the low burner pressure. Okay. Then we move forward, we move on, well still back in time. This was off the standing pilot light boiler. This was the old single solenoid valve, um, where on the, 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 the modulator we have a brass and a plastic nut. The brass nut was the low burner pressure and the plastic nut was the high. Thermocouple connected to here. The thermocouple is about 18 millivolts when you're testing. Single solenoid with about 3K across there on the gas valve. Uh, again, not used, just fixed solenoid all late 2020, not modulating, just step modulating up and down. So then we move on a little bit further and here we've got the Honeywell gas valve. Again, the brass nut becomes the low burner pressure and the plastic nut becomes the high. Take note on the Honeywell modulator itself. All the modulators are 28 volts DC maximum. So Maximum, if the burner pressure is set right, maximum it will be maximum at 28 volts. As it modulates, then that, that obviously modulation comes down by reducing the DC. So remember that, guys, it's DC, not AC, when you're testing on the, the modulex, okay? If we just look at the, the solenoid, we have two solenoids. We have a large one and a small one. The small one, obviously, in, 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 in days gone by, was the pilot solenoid. But as gas valves came, came forward and forward, they were still using gas valves with a pilot solenoid and a main solenoid. So the pilot solenoid on here, if we're doing a resistance test across the pins, ignore the middle pin, that's the earth pin. But on the small solenoid, we'd expect to see about 3.5K. And on the larger solenoid, which is the main solenoid, we'd expect to see about 4.5 to 4.8 in ohms resistance, K, obviously, okay? Move along, just, just work, one thing worth mentioning, if we look at these Honeywell gas valves, then if you just have a look there, very important. You'll see there one has a thread for a pilot tube and this one doesn't. The casement of the Honeywell valve is identical but a totally different valve. Imagine yourself you're in a tight cupboard and you, you're fitting a gas valve with a boiler with a pilot tube like this and then you're trying to get the pilot tube to fit and you've got one without the thread. So worth checking on a Honeywell gas valve, make sure that if, if obviously if you're fully electronic you need the one without the thread because you've no pilot tube and for one with a pilot light assembly with a standing pilot or an electronic pilot make sure you've got the one with the thread. There's nothing worse than fitting it and, and finding out you've got the wrong one. So again with this Honeywell gas valve you've got the low burner pressure being the brass and the plastic being the high. Now Honeywell about three years ago they altered the gas valve. What they did they changed it from brass and plastic to brass and metal. And not only did they change the, the material, they changed the way that it sets. So the brass nut becomes the high and the small metal becomes the low. So just remember, guys, to check your MI when you're actually working on these gas valves because Honeywell three or four years ago did change that over. Bless them. Okay. So remember the, about the thread with the pilot tube. Right. Okay. Move along. We've got the Dung's valve. 
Now you'll see on the Dung's valve here that both the solenoids are the same size. So when you're doing a resistance reading, you'll see that both the coils are exactly the same. And as you can see there, we're looking about 1.87K. And if I check the other one, it's the same, okay? Basically, not rocket science, the solenoids are the same size. Where this would differ, this one's the same because the solenoids are the same. One thing to bear in mind, guys, we use both production and pre-production, okay? Old production and, and still standing production. If you see a gas valve of, of, let's say, the Dung's type, and on the boiler you see a transformer, that gas valve has been driven low voltage. If you don't see a transformer, then that gas valve has been driven high voltage, and that voltage would usually be about between 110 up to 230 volts AC, okay? In some instances, it could be DC. If it's DC, it's usually around 110. So just remember that, guys. If you see a transformer on a boiler, we do both. But if you see a transformer on a boiler, this has been driven low voltage. If you don't, then it's high tension, okay? So just, just bear that in mind, okay? If I move on to the dungs for the, the atmospheric appliance where we've got high and low burner pressure, this was the modulator, okay? And inside there, we have two Allen keys are necessary to set the burner pressures. A 2 mil Allen key is the high burner setting and a 3 mil Allen key is the low and that's standard across the Dung's valve, okay? So it's the opposite way around. 2 mil being high, 3 mil being low, okay? Now, move on. Here we're now into premix, so we're now looking, this is also premix, but we're looking at a premix boiler now. This is Honeywell and this Honeywell valve tells me that this is driven DC voltage, okay? And if we look here, we've got the if you like the throttle. Now on here we're setting this at 9%. This is the click mechanism where it's half a percent CO2 percentage on each click, okay? So formula Allen key, alter your CO2 percentage there, okay? Here is the offset. You don't have to set the low on certainly our appliances, it's already preset, so don't worry about that. But on, 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 on other boilers, sometimes they will ask you to go onto the offset to set the low. One thing I will ask you, be very, very careful when you're tampering with your offsets, because if you knock it out of line, then all sorts of things can go wrong. Okay, so that's the Honeywell. We also use this, the sit, on a range of boilers. And the same thing, this is the offset, okay? And here we have the throttle. On there, that's just a standard screwdriver for the throttle to set the CO2 percentage. Move along, we have the Siemens, which we use on a, a range of appliances, and there at that point we have the throttle plus and minus for setting the CO2. You'll see here that we've got two solenoids the same size, so the ohm's resistance in K will be the same, and that is around 5K, guys, on each, okay? Um, that's the Dung's gas valve fastened to the fan. So I think that just about wraps it up, guys. I hope there's, uh, if you have any questions, just, just give us a call. We're here to help you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Cheers.